everyone this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore welcome to my channel if you're new to my channel I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I post on Tuesday Thursday Sunday if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe hit the bell for notifications each time I upload a new video if you like the video give it a thumbs up comment below and share because all of those things will help my channel and I have a goal for the end of the year for 50,000 subscribers and I got a ways to go but I think we can do it if you all subscribe and I know a lot of you watch all the time and do not subscribe because I see it in my analytics so I would appreciate it if you would subscribe if you're a regular watcher <laughs> all right thank you so much everyone in advance for all that and today I have a treat box to share. This is my favorite, I think, so far this year because it's so stinking cute. It was the first thing I thought of when I got this bundle. It is the Window Wishes bundle, and so this is the treat box. But oh my gosh, y'all, this is perfect for a neighbor's gift. For In fact, I'm going to make a bunch um, for my neighbors this year, and I'm need to share it with you <laughs> so this is what i'm using for this i used our designer series paper we have the six by six designer series paper packs for all of our color families and this one is evening evergreen it's a little hard to see so i'm changing the to soft succulent because i think it'll be a little bit easier for you to see the score lines i hope you y'all like this one because it, it is my favorite all right so let's get started with this might be a little bit longer because there is more detail in putting it together and stuff you know the window and all that but all right so let's get started all right so what are you going to need for this you are going to need the window wishes bundle this one y'all don't miss out on this this is so good i've done other things with this already and um, it's just a really good one i have already pulled out all of the dies that we're using for this I'm also using Peaceful Deer just for this Merry Christmas. I used this the other day for a project, but I'm using the Merry Christmas on this because it fit perfect for the wreath. And then this is the 2021-23 in color paper that I'm using for this. And like I said, I'm using the Soft Succulent this time, but I did use the Evening Evergreen. I love this Evening Evergreen, um, but I thought it was a little bit dark to see the score lines. So... I changed it for this one. I hope it looks just as good. You can also use any of the colors in there because the paper has the line. I thought these lines look like siding, so that's why I used this designer series paper for this. All right, let's get started. The paper that you're gonna need for this, you are gonna need a one piece that is seven by ten and a half all of these measurements will be in the inspiration sheet on my blog at stampingwithamore.com you can go there download it and print it and then you need two pieces to mat it that are three and three eighths by five and three eighths and then you need two that are one and three eighths by five and three eighths you also need a piece of window sheet don't use any flimsy window sheet this is the stampin up one but it's four and a half by three and a quarter and it's really a good quality window sheet. All right, and then we are gonna need a piece for the top, and this is three and an eighth by five and an eighth. And then you need a scrap piece of real red and basic white to stamp. So let's go ahead and get stamping. All right, so I am gonna go ahead, and this is for the little bow that's going to be on the wreath. So I'm going to go ahead. The colors that we're going to use are Garden Green, Real Red, and Mango Melody for stamping. So I'm going to use the Garden Green for the wreath. And I'm going to stamp the wreath right there. I'm doing this first because I need to put my pearlized dots on it for the little berries. But you can also use our Real Red Rhinestones if you want to use that. I'm going to stamp the candles. I'm going to put these over here. And I'm using the Mango Melody for the flame on the candles. Just like that. And I have all the dies that are going to cut this out. They are all in the same bundle. 
So let me grab those dies right here. And we are going I'm to gonna go ahead and run these all through the cotton emboss and then we'll run through the other pieces. I'm also going to run through these two pieces and I'm going to run them through together. Make sure when you run these through you have it evenly spaced in this inside piece. So you want to have it pretty evenly spaced there and then use something to hold it down so you can run it through. I'm going to go ahead and put our dies on here and we're going to run these all through. I'm going to run through the ribbon as well and I will be right back with that. Okay y'all, I've got it all ready to go. I've got the little flames, the candle, the wreath, and we have our two pieces here that are going to go on the front of the box and our little bow here and we're going to go ahead and put these together I know a lot of you um, said that you wanted me to go ahead and do the cutting off the camera so that's what I'm going to do but also um, Today I have to bring it in to show you how I cut the window in here because it's a little bit different because this box is quite big and I had to do it a little trick to try to get it um, lined up right and to get the window in there. So I'm going to bring that up to show you. So there's our little candles we're going to put in for the window. I'm going to go ahead and use my pearlized um, basic effects and we are going to do some little, let's get started off here because sometimes it comes out so fast. So we're going to put some little red berries and I need to set this aside. These do take a while to dry. So we're going to do all the other stuff and have this ready to go. That's why I wanted to get this all done first. So I'm going to set that aside so it doesn't get messed up and set this one aside. And then let's go ahead and grab our box. We'll put this aside as well. We don't need that yet. We're going to grab all our pieces here. And we are going to score this. So on this 10 and a half inch side, and we are going to score this at one half. At four at five and a half and at nine. Y'all, this bone folder has been so good. It's in the description in my, it's a Teflon bone folder, it's in the description. I know some of you already have these, but on the seven inch side, you're gonna score it at one and a half. I hear ambulances and stuff. My husband was in the backyard, it scared me. I started to, do my tutorial and I heard this big bang and then my dog started barking like crazy and I couldn't get my video done so I had to quit it and start over <laughs> but now I hear police cars so I'm wondering what's going on <laughs> alright so this is the piece for the top three and an eighth by five and an eighth you are just gonna score this at three quarters on all th four sides so at three quarters It was very close, the big boom, so I don't know what's going on. But I don't know if a transformer blew or something like that. It kind of sounded that way, but you never know these days. All right, so for the top piece, we are going to cut this here. Cut here and flip these around. So this is your top. You can also, if you really want to get fancy, there's so much you can do. Y'all, you can uh, run this through an embossing folder. I liked it plain, but I think that the embossing folder would be really cute as well. Let's sharpen these while we have it out here. I'm using the thick basic white, by the way. This really works so well for boxes. It's a really good thickness. 
And um, don't use anything flimsy if you're going to give these as gifts because the quality, the quality, y'all. <laughs> All right, so this is the top. And then the bottom, or the box part, you're going to cut off this half inch on the bottom. This is going to be our glue tab here, right here. Then you're going to cut in, I'm going to cut in here a little bit. So you're going to cut in each one of these. Y'all, there's police cars still coming. I don't know what it is. I'll have to update you on the next video. <laughs> And then all these bottoms, these, this is our bottom flaps. Okay, oops, got stuff on me. All right, now we need to map this. I'm gonna flip it over because when I fold it, I want where you score it, I always fold the opposite way. So I'm gonna map these. Now I'm gonna use my Stampin' Seal for this. All right, now it's matted. Now one thing you want to be sure about doing, let's let's sharpen these score marks first. It'll be make it easier when you get to the point where we need to glue it. We're not going to glue it yet because we got to put our window in. Okay, so when this piece is going to go back, so see where the glue tab is here? You want that to, in the back. And this is going to be our window right here. It just looks neater there. So not on this side where the glue tab is, but on this side right here. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to cut the window in. So we, instead of using these two together, we're just gonna use this one here. And you're gonna put it maybe a half inch toward the bottom here. I like to make it a little bit lower, Let's say maybe a half inch or so. And then you're gonna Make sure that's in place really good. And I'm gonna bring the cut and emboss here and show you how I ran it through because it's definitely too wide. All right. So you are gonna have a little bit of a mark on the bottom, but you have there's a way to solve that. So we're gonna put this here. You want to pull these all up and fold these. So this one's gonna have a little bit of a mark on the bottom but if you're worried about that, which I, didn't bother me, but, and I'm pretty picky about stuff, so let's go ahead and just run this through and I'll show you. So I'm just going to run it through to cut and then bring it back. All right. So you'll see this little mark right here, but if you don't like that, you can put this first, and then when you close it, you can use this one on the bottom. But I'm still doing it this way because it doesn't, it's the bottom of the box, y'all. It doesn't really, I mean, they're not gonna really pay attention to that, I don't think. <laughs> so you're gonna remove these, save these, because you can use this for something else. So there is our window right there. What we're going to do next is put our window sheet on, and I'm going to use wet glue for this. It just seems easier to me, and it dries clear. So I'm just going to use the, and I'm going to put it all the way down. And don't overdo it because you don't want it to go into your window. You don't want it to like spread into the window area. I had that happen and I had to clean it all up. But this really strengthens your box too. That's why I said don't use anything flimsy because it really does strengthen your box. Now what I did with mine is I just put my little, my large clear block over that for a minute and then um, it 
held it. I'm not going to have time to do that now, but I think I will do that. I'll, I'll go ahead and glue the top together so you can see that, and then we'll leave that on there. So let's go ahead and do this and just put Stamp and Seal Plus on all these corners. You can use tear and tape as well for this. And then you're just going to pull up your corners, and this is the top of the box. And I don't know why I got one side. I hope the, that I did this right. If it doesn't fit, we're going to know why. I have a little overhang, which I don't know why I have an overhang here. So let's cut that off. And if I'm off, I'm going to have to score it again. Maybe I scored it wrong. I don't know why. All right. Okay, so this is ready to come off. And it should be nice and dry now. So let's go ahead and put our other pieces on here. This is the fun part, y'all. So you want to use something with a fine tip because you need to get around these little areas. And the, these bottles that I use are linked in the description as well. And then you're going to just put this one on. I thought of so many ways to do this. I thought I could have made this frame like a crumb cake and make it look like it was a brown frame around the edge. Use your imagination, y'all. But then I really liked the white. <laughs> so I left it with the white. And then we're going to put this piece on too. Make sure you get all these little edges. I shouldn't be doing this on my box part. Because if you know, I get messy like that. And we're going to put this piece on here. The real test is going to be if our lid fits on after I had that little overhang on it. Sometimes I get that. I don't know. I should cut all these corners a little bit better. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to put our little candle in the inside because I want it to look like it was from the inside. So you're just going to put glue on this bottom piece right there. And then just look where your edge is here and then just put that in the center. Just like that. We're putting the wreath on the outside, but we're putting this on the inside. So look at that. Isn't that cute? Though it Look, the candle shining through. All right, let's go ahead and before we put it together, we have to put our sentiment. Now you can do this before, but I found it easier to put it on the top here. So I'm going to use Memento Black. While it's flat, don't forget that part. So we're going to put from our hearts to yours. And of course, it fits perfect on here because it goes with this bundle. Isn't that cute? I just love that. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and do our Merry Christmas. And we'll have that ready to go, too. So let's scoot that out of the way so I can get this straight here. There's our Merry Christmas. That is for our wreath. And I'm just going to cut that out by hand. Y'all, I have a bunch of scissors. I got so much stuff out here. I'm just going to cut it close to your letters. If you want to flag it, you can flag the end, but I'm not flagging it for this one. All right, so we have that ready to go. Let's put our box together. Use something really strong, tear and tape or your stamp and seal plus. This Stamp and Seal Plus has held my boxes together. I've been really pleased with how well they are staying together. So just line these up. I've done some a year ago and they're still together. So that is a good sign. So like I said now on the bottom, if you don't want that little part to show, you can cover it like that. But I really like the flap going back. So I'm just going to leave it, y'all. I just don't think it's that big of a issue. It's not that noticeable anyway. So we're going to put that on the bottom. 
And here's our box. Now let's go ahead and get our wreath. I'm going to pop that up with a dimensional. So I'm just going to put one dimensional right at the top. And we're going to put our wreath right here. And then we're going to do our Merry Christmas. And I'm putting little mini dimensionals on this one. I'm putting two. And I'm going to actually put them on the wreath here. This was a little bit easier than putting it, trying to get guess the right spot to put it. All right, and then put your Merry Christmas on. Cross that wreath there. Look how cute. Isn't that so cute? All right, here's the test, y'all. Let's see if our lid fits on. Yes, it does. Look at that. <laughs> Yay. All right, now we're going to put our little holes in for our ribbon. I'm using the red and green um, that I use all the time, the combo pack, the red and, real red and green, garden green combo pack. I'm going to use the red again on this one. And I'm using my big monster of a hole puncher. <laughs> I've had this for ages, y'all. But I'll link it in the description. You have to mark these, though, first. Mark it at, like, one inch. So I'm just going to mark it one inch down because you don't want it to interfere with your, your lid. Whoops. So just mark that. So you're at least even, pretty even on there. So we're going to put this in here. It's a little bit hard to maneuver. I don't have the hand, I did have the handheld one, but I don't know what hand, happened to that. So we're going to punch the hole there, and then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to do the same on this one. Oops. All right, we got our holes. If I had the little hand, the crocodile, I think it is, if I had that handheld one, I'd use that. The regular hole punch was too hard for me to press because I have that um, issue with my hands. <laughs> so it was hard for me to press it through all this paper. All right, so we are going to, we're starting here. Yes, we are. For a minute, I lost my train of thought. All right, so you're gonna pull it big enough however tall you want your handle to be um, and then just add a little bit of extra for your knot so I'm gonna measure this and I'll tell you about how much I used for this so it's about 14 inches alright so let's go ahead and bring this through tie a knot on this side you're gonna want to reinforce this as well you can double knot it but what I did, I just took a piece of tape. This has worked for me before. And just put the piece of tape on the end here. And when you pull it through, you want to just reinforce it with the tape. So just press it down on the inside. And holds it pretty well. And then you're going to bring this one through. And this handle may end up a little shorter. I'm not sure. I think I put my knot a little bit further. So make sure you cut enough ribbon for the length that you want. And then I'm going to use another piece of tape. Put it on the end here. And I'm going to pull that tight. And then I'm just going to press that down. So there's our little handle. I think this handle's a little shorter, y'all, than my other one. But just do it however long that you like it. And don't get your handle caught underneath there. You don't even have to put a handle on it, y'all, if you don't want to. But there you go. It is all finished. Isn't that so cute? I really, really love the Evening Evergreen. I think Garden Green would be pretty with this or Shaded Spruce. Um, all of them. I mean, they're both cute. Which one do you like better? I think I really like this one, the, the dark color. 
but you can do it with every color we have in the color family and just look like different siding on it, different color houses. All right, everyone, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's my October hostess coat if you need any supplies. All the products for this will be listed on my blog at stampingwithamoray.com. You can shop right from my blog. I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later, everyone. Bye.